Hello everyone. Sorry, I uh, I was quite busy last week, so I, I didn't really have a lot of time to put up any video for you. But here we are again with another series. As I promised before, this is going to be a series of Bobcat uh, Taxidermy. So I hope you take advantage of it. Um, I have a little bit of a knowledge on it and um, I'm trying to do my best so you can um, take advantage of whatever I've learned on this one so um, I'm going to let you watch again it seems like um, this is the best way and I will start to chime in wherever I uh, I feel it's needed uh, to begin with I'm gonna tell you that the first step here I'm trying to do is trying to just um, test proof or um, basically fit the fit the skin on the mannequin to see it where we are are we too large are we too small because um, it's always important to have a, a proper fit when we get our mannequin so for doing that uh, we have uh, basically uh, the cat form came in different parts so I decided to put them all together so I can start uh, pulling the skin over. Now, one thing interesting here is that this is this cat has been skinned as a case of skin uh, method. So basically, from back leg to back leg, and uh, it's been inverted the whole, all the way to the head, as you can see. So basically, the whole skin is tubed. Uh, obviously, we can't really mount it this way. Now I'm showing you my method of creating the dorsal incision in, in proper um, basically place and trying to do it uh, with some uh, points and uh, sewing points that, that you can basically sew it back in the proper uh, spot because the skin is quite stretchy after it's tanned and oiled so we don't we don't want to have one side of the skin to to have extra length to it comparing to the other side so for that as you can see i have the skin totally laid down on its belly and and the back side of the cat is on the top and what i do um i basically put some lines right ar along the back where the spine is uh, to make sure that my line, my, my incision is going to go straight along that line. And also what I do, I make some cross lines. This would come in handy when I'm sewing the skin back. So I make sure that those lines line up and meet up. And I grab my brand new blade scalpel and slowly without putting too much pressure, slowly cut and create that incision right along those lines that um, I put on the cape. I just put it on with, with just a regular pen and um, it's the best because it doesn't bleed into the skin so it basically just leaves a good mark and if it fades away at least uh, you can still see it so we can we can continue using it for sewing it back on. Now that we have the skin open, we're going to try to pull it over the mannequin. Always try to uh, test fit the mannequin before you do the sanding because it's going to slide a lot easier on, this, on the mannequin. Yeah, as you can see, the incision on the back leg is just one from this paw to the other paw, so it's giant. It helps for test fitting, but we're gonna sew it up anyway. What I like to do, I try to um, go all over, have the skin totally uh, stretch all over the mannequin. And the skin should reach 
fairly easy. If you have a half inch or a little bit more or less in different animals, if you have uh, basically, uh, you have, it seems like your body is bigger than the skin for up to that much, it's not a big deal because after uh, you, you sh uh, basically you sand the form down and you apply it at height paste, the skin tends to slide a lot easier. So uh, I'm totally against having to fight uh, the skin on the mannequin, I believe. Uh, it should be as fit and as relaxed as as you skin it off the animal. So now I'm trying to do the test fitting on on the head. This head that uh, came with the bobcat actually it looked quite interesting. I mean, in in general it had um, it had a very uh, good anatomy in my eyes for a bobcat. But it had a lot of different uh, areas that I couldn't really understand why those, especially around the nose and the uh, front corner of the eyes, it had a lot of areas like um, maybe anchor points or if you want to call them, um, some, some areas that I, I believe it was designed for something but I couldn't figure them out. I just had to fill them all out with clay and work my way the way I like to. <laughs> also, this came in, uh, was supposed to come in with the specific eyes, and I didn't like the look on that eye, so I ordered a different type of eye that I could work with. <clears throat> a little bit of a shaving on the face and around the uh, ear butts and nose and mouth and as you can see I'm using my scalpel to just shave them all up make them nice and thin and trim all the excess and make them ready for mounting This bobcat actually had a very nice looking mane around its face. It, uh, it had a long mane on it and uh, it with really beautiful spots and markings on it. And the client was really excited to have that full disc on, on the facial uh, hair to be, to be totally shown because, uh, it, because it, it, it does look very nice on, on bobcats. And, especially links too. So you will see at the end of the video or at the end of the series what the mount looks like. <clears throat> Scalpel is one way of removing the excess membrane and the final fleshing but I'll show you a different method as well. As you can see, I have not removed the cartilage of the ear. The cartilage on these small animals are so thin and um, it's much safer and it works out a lot better just to leave them in and insert your ear liners right in there and then glue them right into the ear liner. It works really good instead of removing them. Or at least this is what I have experienced. So in order to have your ears mounted perfectly good, you need to open them up all the way to the very edge. 
and uh, your scalpel is too sharp. What I use is the tip of my uh, spatula. I have one of my spatulas, it's got a very thin steel to it and it's round. It doesn't really cut anything but the shape of the spatula with a little bit of pressure and of, of, of course uh, putting my finger from inside pushing that edge out and uh, on the other side with that spatula uh, it, I work it like a uh, kind of like a dull knife but it still works better sorry it seems like the video is a little bit out of focus too I think I've left it on the manual focus in, instead of autofocus I'm trimming the excess of skin around the lips because uh, you don't want to tuck all of that inside the mouth it's going to be too much so make sure that you leave yourself about a quarter inch or a little bit more maybe on bigger animals leave yourself that much in or attach to the skin so you have an easier time to uh, to basically tuck them in and the same thing with the nose push out all the skin from the hole like make them uh, right side out and uh, that way you can uh, trim them properly Test fitting the ear liners, making sure that the edges are all nice and thin. And basically, what we're going to do here, we're going to get the skin ready and put it back in the fridge so uh, it, it, it would stay moist for when we're going to start working on it. What you see I'm spraying on it is thinned out PSE tanning oil just to keep it moist and pliable. Thank you very much guys for watching this segment of the video. Uh, hopefully the next one is going to be up tomorrow or the day after. Stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of information. Thank you. Bye-bye.